moving on uh, we are going to begin with the next session uh, where we have uh, the rooftop developers and financiers and uh, we have a slight blend of technology uh, in this so may i invite uh, the panelist uh, for the next session uh, ma'am ritulal as the moderator and chair of the session she is vice president business development at amplus Mr. Venkata Krishna, Strategic Account, Account Manager, India, APEC, from Enphase Energy. Mr. Shishan Manaji, ABP, Tata Clean Tech, Capital Limited. Mr. Ashutosh Singh, Regional Head, Business Development at Climax Solar. Mr. Pradeep Shikantan, Vice President from Reddington Solar Equipment Group. Mr. Amit Husu, Director from Keiko Energy. Mr. Vineet Yagi, Head Sales and Marketing from Insulation Energy. Mr. Ramesh Vyas, Director Solar from International Marketing Corporation and uh, Mr. Mahesh, uh, DGM Business Development from uh, Juvi Energies. May I request uh, the panelists and uh, speakers to take their respective seats on the dais. And uh, we'll begin with a technology presentation by Mr. Venkat Krishnan, uh, who is Strategic Account Manager uh, for India uh, from Enphase Energy. Namaste everyone, so uh, uh, thanks much for uh, coming over for this conference. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be uh, introducing our company and technology over to the audience. So some of you might have attended the uh, presentation in Masma day before yesterday. So please bear with me if it's repetitive, I'll try to add as much more perspective as I can, especially carrying on from the discussion that we had just uh, a while ago with the earlier panel where they did touch upon uh, lot of uh, you know from all angles about the different segments that we are operating in today from solar which is the large scale solar pl plant as well as the rooftop solar keeping in line with the spirit of this conference which will be distributed solar and also you know uh, senior leaders like mr suman sin of venue power who did mention that uh, you know that's that needs to be an essential shift towards uh, uh, a distributed uh, solar segment you know as the way it happened with uh, it and uh, Telecom. So I think that is uh, the same spirit in which Enphase Energy was founded uh, 12 years ago. So we are uh, a company that was uh, essentially formed to uh, commercialize what is known as the microinverter technology. A lot of us are aware of that. So this technology essentially has been around since the 1980s. In fact, some work has also been done in Bangalore at the Indian Institute of Science, uh, some research papers published and so on. But Enphase was the first company to commercialize this uh, technology on a wide scale. And today we stand at about 4,000 megawatts installed across 120 countries. And uh, we'll just give a brief about our company and then take you on over to the technology. So Enphase, uh, as uh, you might know, is a global energy technology company, meaning we are not just a company that supplies a power inversion device that changes the uh, you know, sh 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 changes the power from DC to AC. Rather, it offers an entire platform that enables you to uh, manage your power over the uh, rooftop solar installations. So that is the uh, essential uh, differentiator between Enphase and a lot of other companies which are into offering uh, a typical centralized inversion from DC to AC. So company was founded in 2006 by uh, two gentlemen who come from a very strong distributed solar background. Uh, one of them is an Indian by name Raghu Bellor who hails from Bangalore and then the other is uh, Martin Fonach. So they have been serial entrepreneurs prior to sticking with Enphase for the last uh, 12 years and uh, they actually uh, uh, come from a Cisco distributed network background. So like I just mentioned and also the essence of this entire conference. So everything has to move at some point from a centralized architecture to a distributed architecture. That is the natural growth trajectory. If you want to look at systems which are improving in efficiency, reliability, and which enable you to have a proper asset management, you know, long life and uh, different positive attributes. So in that spirit, this company was founded and uh, the goal, as Mr. Raghu Bello normally puts it, when uh, we actually found, uh, when we actually wanted to uh, commercialize the idea of microinverter was to have a product that will last as long as the longest lasting uh, product that is there in the value chain as of now, which is the module. If you have a good quality module, let's put it that way, it is expected to last beyond 25, 30 years. And we wanted to have an inverter which also lasts the same length of time and beyond. So that an installer, a power developer or EPC player, you know, whomever it is, can put up a system on a rooftop, 
and not have to worry about it except the fact that he has to clean the modules and make sure that the system is in good health from that perspective. That is essentially what we wanted to bring to the global market. And I think we've been reasonably successful with about 16 million units shipped, which roughly translates to about four gigawatts across uh, close to 120 countries. We have official presence in uh, 16 countries, and recently we launched our uh, operations in India with a large office in Bangalore, where we will be, uh, we currently have close to 50 people uh, working with us across all functions. So the office in Bangalore caters to our global operations, meaning we are shifting our software development, new product development, R&D, customer support for the global markets and so on. So the, the point uh, that I'm trying to drive home is that we are here to stay in the long run, as in the global operations of Enphase, which is a NASDAQ listed company, is going to be heavily based out of India. And that means that we are looking at this as a very strategic market, not just from the market perspective, but also looking at it for uh, what value Enphase will add to uh, the, the operations in India will add to Enphase's global operations. That is the point. And, uh, it's certainly something that we have planned for a very long term. So we have 170 active patent families, which I'm sure is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the highest if you look at uh, solar equipment manufacturers. And we are a company that invests about 20% of our revenue back into R&D on a yearly basis. So it's a very, very R&D focused, technology focused company. And uh, it offers a product which is as much software driven. You know, it's not software enabled, but it's controlled and driven by software. And it, uh, we, we process about uh, three terabytes of data a day, which I believe is more than uh, what uh, Twitter does. So it's a very data-driven, strong, technology-focused uh, organization. So here's just a quick history of where we have come from. So 2006, we were founded. Today, we are at uh, actually the sixth generation, which is the IQ, which is getting launched in about a couple of months' time. So these are the gentlemen who founded the company. We got listed in NASDAQ in 2012, and have been, uh, have been on the boards for the last four years five years rather. So yeah, in terms of impact and so on, yes, uh, it's actually four gigawatts now and we have uh, you know, around six billion kilowatt hours of clean energy produced by the global community. And yeah, we do contribute to the uh, making the environment greener, being a solar equipment manufacturing company. Yeah, just to give you a little bit of where all we are present from an official uh, presence across the globe. So basically what we, what we wanted to do uh, when we actually started this company was to have you know, three different uh, uh, parameters across which we'll ensure that uh, there is a differentiating factor between Enphase based system or a microinverter based system and a string inverter based system. So like I just uh, told before, everything has to move towards a distributed architecture, not just from a market segmentation standpoint where you know, we did see the challenges that people face when you're going for rooftop solar, people compare your tariffs to uh, uh, you know, the tariffs of 250 megawatt plants, and also you have so many challenges that can come up with the way the costing varies and so on for uh, distributed rooftop solar. So the, there is an essential shift in the market segment uh, going from a centralized uh, segment to a more distributed solar, which is you know pretty much rooftop, as you can see from a target of 40 gigawatts. And uh, not just that, we also believe that there has to be a shift in the technology from a centralized technology to a distributed technology. That needs to happen if you, if you want to eliminate a lot of uh, uh, failure modes, the biggest one of them being the centralized single point of failure of string inverter and central inverter based systems. If you're going to have any issue at the inverter level, when you're going to have a downtime of the entire system, which needs to be addressed immediately then and there. Whereas with Enphase, what you have is you're moving towards a more uh, uh, focused distributed architecture, a distributed topology, where the, there are going to be multiple points of failure. So I'll just go over the topology a little bit in the next few slides, but what we do is we isolate each module as a separate system. Instead of having a series of modules connected in a string and then having a centralized conversion of power from DC to AC. So there is going to be each module DC to AC happening at the module level. And this, just the very architecture adds to a lot of advantages. So that is what we're talking about, distributed architecture. A system level solution, because it's not just hardware, we do enable bi-directional communication between the microinverter and the uh, 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 the Envoy, which is our monitoring platform. So we constantly read what is being coming out, uh, what kind of energy is generated by each module, 
what is the temperature and so on on a on a real time basis so we know exactly what each module is putting out someone was talking about uh, you know like uh, we don't really know what is the quality of the modules that that we are using and so on with this system we can actually see what each module is putting out as an output some of the module manufacturers might not like this but you will actually get to see what is the output of each module and you can actually pull up the module manufacturer and tell him this module is operating at this it's it's degrading at 1.5% whereas your warranty says it's 0.7% and so on so that level of granular data as a developer and epc player you get to see from your system and it's software defined it's it's completely controlled by our asic chip which is inside the microinverter so as as we all said solar is essentially a financial instrument that is the only way we can make this entire thing work it cannot be something that people are doing for a fan it the gone are the days when it was a fancy thing for green initiative and so on so you put in money you wanted to pay annuities like a very very safe government bond and that is what we wanted to enable and the environment with solar is going to be constantly changing as uh, mr shinde and others will agree that as more and more solar penetrates into the grid and uh, especially in rooftop where you have the, the, the distributed points of solar penetration happening that can be anything that uh, is going to you know affect the grid and you, you might have to come up with certain changes with respect to uh, you know grid profile or frequency and voltage and so on with n phase what you get to do is it's not a dumb box sitting there but each microinverter can actually be sent a, a software update to make it to operate at the way we want it to operate in line with the changing grid conditions let's say 10 years down the road there is like 20 to 30 gigawatts of rooftop solar penetrating into the indian grid you might want to make some changes to make this grid more stable and we can just do that by sitting in our office and sending software updates to the microinverters and making them behave the way we want them to behave without ever having to go to the field and we have done this in the us for hawaii where there was uh, we have about an 80% penetration of in phase systems in the us in hawaii and that there was a blackout of the grid that happened due to a uh, lot of intermittent solar coming in and we actually worked with heiko which is the hawaiian utility and helped them to stabilize the grid and put it back in shape you just need to google in phase hawaii and you'll get all the details about this particular exercise so yeah we just talked about this there are a couple of aspects along which any solar system needs to perform yeah sorry it needs to perform in order to make it a viable investment option you know that is technology is extremely critical but technology has to enable that the investment is strong and solid generating solid returns so we have higher power production because there is individual mppt for each module and the very architecture that it operates at very low voltage on your roof you are not going to have the high voltage dc running let's say an industrial roof of 1 megawatt you have 1000 volts of dc running on your roof it's equal it's equivalent to a locomotive running on your roof whereas with this you have like a phone being charged on your roof so the difference is huge uh, god forbid we don't get into any kind of fire issues due to dc arcing or something but that risk is always prevalent with a dc based system with this all you have is 60 volts of a uh, 60 volts of dc max at any point in time that actually happens conversion from dc to ac at the module level and all the modules are in parallel so there is going to be no failure at the string level at all at any point in time so that covers the safety aspect and then of course it's very easy to design and install and maintain because no matter what the roof you can have a thousand modules in thousand different angles thousand different orientations there is no problem because each module becomes a system in itself generating on its own so you can put any 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 you can fill any part of the roof where you might have partial shading at some points of the day doesn't matter you can maximize your roof area with nphase which is not something that can be offered by uh, any other uh, you know string inverter based systems so basically this is uh, you know this gives from a smaller system perspective so we offer a platform approach we also have storage ac battery storage as we called it the world's first ac coupled battery we use a lithium ferrous phosphate chemistry of course we are not yet bringing it actively into the market because of the pricing considerations but that is an option that we have as well and then uh, it, it offers complete services and as more and more nphase systems penetrate into the grid in particular geographies we will get to know as more, a lot more about the utilities than the utility themselves can know about themselves and we can actually share this data with the utilities to enable them to maintain the grid that is the level of uh, granular data that we can actually gather using our systems so the advantage is five fold better performance reliability safety extremely simple to install there is going to be no complex dc side design and it's all plug and play we just bring we actually have samples outside for you to touch and feel with you know what the product actually looks like so it's just you bring in the uh, the microinverter place it on the rails and just plug it into the ac cable and that's it if it's a small system it goes straight to the lt panel and it's intelligent because it gives you granular data at the module level you get to see what each module is performing so this is what a typical system will look like uh, so you have modules in parallel 
the green spots in between are the uh, microinverter modules output goes into the microinverter's input and then you have the output running through each of these microinverters over to the, uh, the the cable there which is again supplied by end phase it's a five core cable with plc uh, built in for power line communications that carries data from each microinverter over to our monitoring portal which is called the envoy and then it gets stored onto the cloud from there you can access it through your computer or uh, smartphone through our toolkit app and so on and get to see the data of each module of your system in real time on a daily basis and it keeps storing data and you can just you know monitor the health of your system and uh, you know in the uh, in the event a module goes bad or there's going to be some kind of bird dropping or anything wrong with a module or even let's say 20 modules are bad out of 1000 modules you still generate about 98% of what you are actually supposed to generate you don't have to have any panic calls where you have to rush to the site and fix it immediately so that your system downtime is eliminated. So that is the power that it empowers installers and project developers to have complete control over their assets. So in string inverter, we all know the weakest link is the weakest module. As modules age, so the uh, benefit of end phase is more amplified as the systems age. If you're looking at a system that's five years old, each module will degrade differently. So if one module has gone down by 2% or uh, let's say, uh, 8% after five years, the entire string is going to be at that level. So you have to get that module replaced. It's a constant headache. You know, I also come from a IPP and EPC background and I sort of have some experience in, uh, you know, seeing how the IRRs can go for a toss with uh, the uh, asset management being a critical aspect. And you know, we have seen reports that, uh, you know, pretty much 30% of the energy is lost in older systems due to soiling and improper maintenance. And also, uh, I would like to borrow from Niranjan when he said that uh, a lot of CEOs did say that you know, 50 to 60 percent of the uh, systems aren't operating the way we expect them to operate. So these can have a very big uh, bearing on the investor's confidence and the way they evaluate systems. There are high quality systems, no doubt, but there are a lot of systems which are performing badly. And that is what we said to, uh, we want to really come in and eliminate those kind of uh, hiccups in uh, accelerating the deployment of solar. So it enables module independence. I think we covered this, so each module is separate and all of them are on parallel. So it eliminates high voltage DC, might not be a big factor yet in India, nobody talks about safety with respect to solar, but high voltage DC on the roof can be dangerous if there is going to be some kind of DC arcing, bad cabling and so on. And especially if you're talking about uh, institutional solar like schools, hospitals and so on, you really want to have some kind of, uh, you know, you want to go with the safest solution. That's, that's what anybody would expect. And if you look at markets like US and Australia, there are certain st strict requirements where you have to meet in the US, for example, as per NEC, the systems have to have PV rapid shutdown features. And we, we, are, we are among the only inverters, I think, few inverters offer that. And uh, in schools and uh, petrol pumps in the US, Enphase is the one that has got the major market share. So obviously they have some kind of safety norms which are strictly fo followed. And Enphase has been promoted there because of this particular feature. So they eliminate complex string design. And all you have to worry about as an EPC player is one skew. One skew fits all modules. So this microinverter goes from 300 watts to 420 watts. So it, it, it's all you have to care about in terms of maintaining stock. You don't have to worry about, let's say you're doing all kinds of systems from one kilowatt to one megawatt. You have to worry about stocking a five kilowatt inverter, six kilowatt, 10 kilowatt, I mean, whatever the sizes are. Here, all you have to worry about is I need uh, 10,000 microinverters in my warehouse at any point in time, or, or whatever the number is. And it, planning is so much easier. And it's the same for a small system or a large system. Completely independent of each other, each module is independent of the other module, making life easier from a design standpoint. This is what it looks like, so it fits in the palm, you can actually have a look at the inverter outside. And you just put it in there and the module's output goes from here. The AC output comes there, so the cable that you see there, it goes and plugs into that particular engage cable and that's it, you're done with the installation. It, it then goes to the, the AC power is carried by that cable. If it's a large system, you'll have multiple parallel branches which are combined using an AC combiner box and then taken over to the LT panel. So what it basically does, quick summary, I think I've talked about it. So it eliminates a uh, high voltage DC. It, uh, it, it eliminates a single point of failure, which we all don't want. And uh, each module is a separate system with individual MPPT. So better generation, safety, shading and soiling tolerance and uh, long life. So we have a mean time between failure of 335 years. While it might not mean much, for actual conditions, if you take one tenth of that as being true, then you're looking at 30, 35 years of uh, life on the field, which is again a, a pretty significant uh, lifetime for a solar system. So the advantages, why you get better output, I'll quickly go through this, module and temperature mismatch, shading, soiling, system availability, that is our biggest uh, selling point there. 
older systems, the availability can be down and we really address that. Low light performance boost. So we started low voltages like we, because of the fact that we are per module inverter and that enables us to generate uh, an hour before string inverters typically generate and pretty much an hour after string inverters shut down. So that means we generate more per day just from a system availability perspective and we also have burst mode operation which enables us to generate in low light conditions. So if you look at it, just taking a very small example of a six module system, if one module is at 50%, your power output is going to be at 50%. With N-phase in a six module system, in the same scenario, you'll have 85% more generation. Uh, and we need to wrap up. From a larger time's up. Sorry. Time's up. Time's up? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I just wanted to uh, just take two minutes. So basically, we have uh, done. A f we started our operations in 2016. I mean, getting into the market, and we have the largest system we have done is a one megawatt for a leading FMCG company near Bangalore on a PPA model. So happy to discuss. Uh, you know, if you want, you can. We have a stall outside with Reddington, who is one of our uh, distributors. You can have a touch and feel of the product and get in touch with me for any any questions or anything interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so it was an excellent uh, presentation on a technology that is relatively uh, new uh, to India. Uh, thank you so much for that, Venkat. And uh, with that, we'll uh, kick off uh, the next panel. And uh, some of us have presentations. Show of hands who all have presentations. Everybody. OK. So if we uh, intend to have any kind of a discussion, that said about seven minutes per presentation. And if we could just stick to that, and uh, uh, we have all the presentations lined up, so just start. So uh, let's start with the, the left-hand side, right? Just quickly introduce yourself for a minute, and then uh, you can just present. And I will be reminding you at uh, seven minutes. <laughs> So good afternoon, everybody. I represent uh, Insulation Energy. We are a module manufacturers. And uh, my name is Vineet Tiagi. And I head sales and marketing team at Insulation. So we market our uh, modules in the brand name of INA. INA basically is a, a Sanskrit word. And it has the meaning uh, sun rays. So that is the significance of INA. We are uh, based out of Jaipur with the 60 megawatt of annual module manufacturing capacity. We are into business for the last two decades and our sister concern is Flutecon engineers who are into very diverse fields like steel, industrial pipes, real estates, health and fitness centers. And then we have insulation and energy. We are also as an independent solar power producer with two megawatt of plant at Ujjain and another one megawatt at Bikaner. So uh, coming back to insulation energy, it is one of the most advanced fully automatic 60 megawatt of SPV module manufacturing facility. We started in uh, April 2017, and I am happy to share that we are going to uh, add another line soon to it, and it will be a 100 megawatt capacity soon. It is a least manual intervention and continuous automatic process with a spread out of six, more than 65,000 square feet of area with automatic stingers, both pre and post automatic framing machines and AAA class sun simulator. Just like to take uh, you through the entire process, the first step is a glass loading, then followed up with PVA cutters, stringing, bussing sections. Then we have a pre-EL tester followed by lamination, post-EL testers, then framing, and finally, the sun simulator with the sorting. Just like to highlight a pre-lamination to EL tester. In the morning session, we were talking about the quality. Right, so this is a very important step in that because once the lamination is done, nothing can be done. So to sort out any kind of defects during the pre-lamination states, you can actually see through the pre-lamination uh, test itself. This is the OK module and in the next slide you can see the dark spots. So any kind of current losses, any kind of misconnections, any kind of any other deformities, it can be checked and cured itself before the lamination state starts. These are the actual photographs of our production flow. 
so coming back to the topics uh, since the morning we have been discussing about uh, price coming down safeguard duties anti dumping duties so just to give a background on that we have already crossed more than 15 gigawatt of solar cumulative installations with more than 7 gigawatt being added this year and rooftop installations a good news we have crossed 1 gigawatt of mark and now renewables almost comprises 18% of the total installed capacity of india with solar accounting for 4.5% next year it is forecast is to cross 8 gigawatt in fact this year and tariff have come down to 2.5 kilowatts per hour now the key challenges which are facing the indian market so i think the first and the foremost and the latest one is the safeguard duty the directorate general has already recommended 70% safeguard duty against china and malaysia for the initial 200 days and it will be further followed by the committee on Fina finance secretaries commerce revenues and industrial policies and external affairs before it is being rolled out as a rule the next is already we are facing problems the last 2 3 months the central board of excise and custom has already imposed 7.5% duty on imported modules and with the cess it is coming down to around 7.8 or maybe around 8 percent we have already been talking about anti dumping duty for the last 4 5 years it is again in the pipeline again and the latest we have seen the prices spikes compared to last year quarter half yearly one the prices have gone up by 14 percent then there have been ppn negotiations renegotiation in certain states and issues surrounding the incomplete infrastructures and there are many projects which are complete but unable to get connected to the grid and finally there is a confusion regarding the goods and service tax the different components are taxed at different rates and there is a ambiguity regarding that and lastly but not the least the imposition of bis norms of late uh, government has made it mandatory the bis norms to be effective from 1st of april this year so the companies who have already having iec certificates and all they have to get it done again uh, through the bis norms though even though we don't have the sufficient facilities to test these kind of things but still it has been being mandatory from april thank you so uh, this was about the presentation just like to uh, Discuss or we'll do the discussions uh, at, with the panel and then questions at the end. Okay. okay. That, that, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, excellent timekeeping as well.